Welcome to another video. I have an improper integral here that contains both type 1 and type 2 of the problem. Now the problem is that if you look above, the most obvious one is that you cannot plug in infinity after you're done integrating. So we say it's an improper integral because one of the bounds, this one, is infinite. So you cannot just integrate and plug in infinity. You have to say, I'm going to replace infinity with a letter, say T or R or whatever you like, and say, as that letter goes to infinity, I'm going to evaluate my answer. So that would have been the only problem. However, if you look at the bottom, we still cannot plug in zero because if you plug in zero here, the denominator becomes zero. And then you have a vertical, you have a vertical asymptote and there's a discontinuity that you cannot remove, so you will have to rewrite it. So this is a proper improper integral. I said proper because it contains the two types that we usually talk about. It is either you have a vertical asymptote within the interval you're integrating over at the beginning or in the middle or at the end, which in this case it's at the beginning, or your bounds of integration, one of them or both of them will be infinite, which is the case here. So what should you do like this when you have a situation like this? You have to rewrite the integral, but first, because you have both combined, remember, we have to say that if you have an integral that goes from zero to infinity, you might as well say it is an integral that goes from zero to any number between zero and infinity. And to be safe, always use one, because one is an easy number to deal with. So I'm gonna call this one, and then this goes from one to infinity. So I have rewritten this like this. So I have two functions. It's the same thing, but I'm just going to get to different answers when I'm done. So I'm going to integrate these ones, but I'm going to have two different bounds I'm going to be dealing with. So how do you rewrite this integral? The best thing to do is to say that this integral can be rewritten. Let me pull it down here. I'm going to rewrite this to be equal to the limit I'm going to use t as t goes to zero from, because when you're going to zero, you're definitely coming from the top, from numbers greater than zero. So you have to specify that you're going to zero from the right of this integral, which is going to be three over the square root of x times x plus six. That's the first part. Hey dx. You're going from t to 1. So I just used this, but I can no longer use 0, so I decided to use this. Plus the second part, which is going to be plus the limit. Now you can still use t, and you can decide to use another letter, it doesn't matter, but you can use t. As t goes to, now t is going to infinity. It's the same exact thing, the integral of 3 over the square root of x times x plus 6 dx goes from 1 to infinity. Oh, to t rather. From 1 to t. So you can see that what we're dealing with, have they both have nice things, no zero, no infinity. This is how you take care of the situation. You must rewrite this this way, or at least show this, but you still have to write the limits. So now, because the two integrands are the same, we're gonna ignore the bounds and just look for a strategy to integrate this and come back and put them in these bounds and take the limits. So let's try to integrate this. What would you think of? Right now I'm thinking of two strategies. It is either I do a u substitution to replace the square root of x, which usually works because it's in the denominator and I can always get rid of it. Or you can do um, 
integration by parts but you may not see the integration by parts immediately. So what I'm gonna do most likely is I'm gonna do a use substitution. Okay, just to make things clearer. So I'm gonna say um, u sub. So we say, let u be the square root of x. Okay, that means that u squared is equal to x because I need to replace this x. Now, if I take the derivative of this, what do I get? I get 2u du will be equal to dx. So that, um, because I need the square root of x down here, and I know that u is the square root of x, I can always bring it back here and say that 2 du is equal to 1 over u, which is 1 over the square root of x dx, which I see here because I can write this as the integral. Put the 3 on the back here. I have 1 over, this is going to be um, 1 over x plus 6 times 1 over square root of x dx. So I've made what I'm going to do very clear now because right now what I have <coughs> Let's put this here. So this is this, and that is my 2 du. And 1 over x plus 6, I already know that x is u squared. So this integral becomes 3 times the integral of 1 over u squared plus, is it 6? u squared plus 6. Okay, u squared plus 6 times 1 over x dx is just going to be 2 du. At this point, we know that u squared plus 6, um, we can use the tan substitution. So we pull this all over here. So let's say i, because I'm going to need to use this i abbreviation, is going to be 6 times the integral of 1 over, this is going to be u squared plus, plus 6. But I'm going to write this as the square root of 6 squared okay so the appropriate tan substitution is to say that u is equal to square root of 6 tan theta okay you just put this number here because you've written it as the sum of two squares so we say let um, u be equal to square root of 6 tan theta oh this one has du so that du will be equal to square root of 6 secant squared theta d theta times the integral let's put a line here okay it's going to be 6 times the integral of 1 over now our u squared is going to be 6 tan squared theta so we have 6 tan squared theta um, plus this is going to be 6 plus 6 multiplied by, we're going to go replace du with this, square root of 6 secant squared d theta, square root of 6 secant squared theta d theta. So, well, when we clean up, this square root of 6 comes back all the way here, so we have 6 square root of 6, and under, we can factor out the 6 divided by 6, so that what we have left is just secant squared theta integral of secant squared theta d theta over tan squared theta plus 1. But we know that secant squared theta is tan squared theta plus 1, so all we have left is just d theta. So this is equal to square root of 6 integral of d theta. And we know this is the same thing as square root of 6 times theta. Wow, all of the work we've done is just square root of 6? That's crazy. Square root of 6 times theta. Now we just have to go back and do all the substitutions until we get back to x. So from here we said u is square root of 6 tan theta. It means tan theta is u over square root of 6 and theta will be octan u over square root of 6. So we know that our answer here is the square root of 6 times octan um, 
u over square root of 6. But what was u? We said u is square root of x. So it is the square root of x over the square root of 6. Oh, we could do 1. Okay. Okay, let's just say that. The integral that we have, this problem we have from the beginning, is basically, that's interesting, is basically our i is equal to the square root of 6 times the inverse tangent of the square root of x over 6. This is all we've been working to obtain. But because it's a definite integral, we now need to go take this answer, evaluate one of them from t to 1, and take the limit as t goes to 0 from the right, and evaluate the second one, this same one, from 1 to t, and take the limit as t goes to infinity. So this is the part that calls for attention. Now we've done all our skills and we have this. So now we're going to do, okay, we said we're gonna go from zero to some t, right? And we said, I mean, to some number, that number we chose it to be one. So we go from zero to one and then from one to infinity. That's what we're doing here. We're going from zero to one and from one to infinity. But with zero, we can plug in zero. So we said it's t and we're taking limit as t goes to zero. And that's what we're doing for infinity here. Okay, let's evaluate. This is gonna be equal to, if I plug in one, what I'm gonna be getting is gonna be the limit as t goes to zero from the right. If I plug in one here, it's just square root of six over 10, one over six. So it's square root of six, but I'm gonna have minus if I plug in t here, it's going to be the square, I can move the square root of 6 to the back actually. Okay, let's finish this. Square root of 6, and it's going to be, um, not 10, arc 10, come on, um, inverse 10 of, uh, arc 10 of square root of t over 6. Okay. So we're going to have minus or plus the limit as t goes to infinity of, um, if we plug in t, we're going to have the square root of 6 inverse tangent of square root of t over 6. And then we have minus, it's going to be this, just this, which is going to be the square root. Okay, what would it be, the square root? of 6 inverse tangent inverse tangent of the square root of 1 over 6 that's 1 over square root of 6 1 over the square root of 6 okay now the point i wanted to make is that this is the limit here because this is a number the limit will always be this number because this is a number there's no variable in it it's the same thing so this We'll always cancel this out. Let's do that. So this is gone and this is gone. So what is really left is the limit of this as t goes to zero from the right and the limit of this as t goes to infinity. So let's see what it is. So here we're going to say this is equal to, we're just going to write, I'm going to pull the square root of six to the back. The square root of six all the way. So I'm going to have the limit as t goes to zero from the right of arc 10, where is it? This one, arc 10 t over six square root plus the limit as t goes to infinity of arc 10 of t square root of t over six, okay. Now, we're almost there, the answer. I think we have to get rid of the spot. So now let's consider limit. What happens when t goes to zero from the right? It cannot be from the left. You can even see that t is under the square root sign. So this has to always be a positive number. 
But as t goes to zero, what do you think is happening to arc 10? It's going to zero. Actually, this is a zero. Oh, okay. So we can say that our i star is equal to zero plus. Let's see what this limit is. What do you think is happening as t goes to infinity? Well, this arc 10, come on, is inverse tangent. I hope I haven't left any tangent. It's inverse tangent. Okay. Now, what's going on as t is approaching infinity? Because this is infinity now. The square root of infinity is infinity. Because infinity divided by 6 is infinity. So as our octane approaches infinity, what is the limit? I mean, as t approaches infinity, the inverse tangent approaches pi over 2. Remember. Okay. So this is going to be pi over 2. That's crazy. Oh, this is all of this multiplied by the square root of 6. Wow, this has been a long trip. And I think that's my answer. That's crazy. Okay, this is going to be um, square root of 6 pi over 2. Huh. I hope this is correct. I didn't see that coming. Never stop learning. Because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.